Hey guys, what's going on? This is Brad from the Ed Army, and we have an off the cuff video that's a little bit uh, more random to come out this soon, but I actually decided to do this ahead of some other video, so it gives me a little bit more time to tweak out um, some of the editing I want to do because I need to do a little bit more editing for some stuff and it's just taking time. So I brought another off the cuff video because a lot has just happened. I haven't had to talk about it yet, and we actually have a few things. So, first and foremost, we are going to have a discussion quickly because Yu Gi Oh!'s ban list came out today. So, obviously, I did want to let people know I'm not forgetting about Yu Gi Oh! because I'm just not making as much content on it. I still want to talk about it because, you know, it was a big part of my life. But also, we had a Digimon ban list that came out. I want to give some thoughts on it, but not really the thoughts that everybody else is having. More of just talking about why it's going to be so useful going forward. So, you know, hang on, grab your seats, sit down, and enjoy because I've got some stuff coming to you. So, first and foremost, what am I going to start with? I'm actually not going to start with Yu-Gi-Oh! because I'll do it last because it's more of just me thinking... Well, you know, not bad because it was, I don't think it was an unexpected ban list. We knew a ban list was coming, but we also wanted something different. So therefore, I'll start with the Digimon ban list because it's a lot smaller. And luckily, because Digimon has explanations, I will read them. At first, I wasn't going to read them, but I want to just kind of go over why I think it's true and not true. But first and foremost, let's go over them. So I actually want to start with the five cards that were put on the ban list. I'm actually happy nothing got banned because... Uh, I don't know what they could have banned. I think the only problem I'm having is that they banned a lot of cards that have just recently come out. And although I like that, I do think that also shows that maybe there is a little bit of power creep hitting the game harder. Because they've had to print a lot of cards to kind of just like nudge their way, or it's a nudge, nuzzle their way through and like, like kind of punish different um, strategies. So, you know, there is that. Funny enough, we still only have one banned card, like completely banned, and obvious for obvious reasons, but with Mega Digimon Fusion or Fuse into the Ultimate Digimon, that name will always be cooler. So when we have the cards that are on the ban list, we or at least the ones that just entered the ban list, their reasonings for being hit are obvious. So starting off with Bukamon, I understand what they mean by because it granted you know simple jamming i really like bukamon i think my problem with bukamon was i always knew it was going to be a problem it's one of those times where i think as a Yu-Gi-Oh player brain you use your mind and say oh this card's easily going to be broken it's just going to take time i think the problem with bukamon was that i don't think it should have been on an egg i think to balance it out it really should have been on the gomamon from bt14 and then Gomamon's effect to play a Gomamon from its sources should have been on the Bukamon. And my reason for this is that by forcing the players to utilize Bukamon in their decks as it was made meant that you didn't really need to play any of the strategies to go with Bukum or with the Bukamon egg. You were really focused on just like slapping blue Digimon cards on top of it because it would grant jamming. So if you could trash cards even better because you would keep your jamming going. But the point is it didn't really facilitate anything else to be better because it was it, there's no other reason why you wouldn't want to run it you could just run draw cards or search cards in addition to having jamming and that was too juicy to pass up and i think by putting it on the gomamon from bt14 would have been a better idea because then it would have forced people to have to search for their jamming piece because the one thing about digimon that is actually pretty unique is that unlike something like Yu-Gi-Oh, where you can just kind of filter through your decks to get to your pieces at some point with Digimon, you still have to find a way to get it into rotation. What I mean by it is, like, since we had to digivolve your cards, you don't necessarily get to just, you know, draw it and know it's playable. You have to make sure you have, like, maybe a free egg to digivolve on top of. Maybe you want to hard play it so you can start building the stack into in the battle area. So, you know, there's a lot of things that make it a bit different. So, printing something like this in an area where it's uninteractable and your opponent usually is going to bring up that card with the Bukamon egg and start using its effect just made it a little bit too, I think, aggressive and a little bit too much um, abusable, in my opinion. So, I really think that... This going to one was fair, but I don't really think it should have been on an egg in the first place. That effect really should have been given to like a rookie or maybe even a champion to give it or as it's inheritable just to make it a bit more balanced. But I understand. So, yeah, we can move on from there. And yeah, Bukamon going to one. Fine. Now, Apocalymon's interesting because if you're not a TCG player, this obviously makes sense to you because it's been running around like crazy. For those in the TCG who are probably not sure about Apocalymon because maybe they haven't heard or maybe they're not paying attention as much. 
Apoglimon is just really, really good because of its effect to effectively deal with the opponent's deck by being a mill card. It was really, really strong, but also when you combine it with other megas, like it states on the on the actual web page for the ban list with like Craniumon, it makes it extremely difficult to get rid of it, and that was kind of the problem because Apoglimon was so strong. It made it pretty. It made it very difficult, and because Apoglimon wasn't like something like Death Xmon or even uh, something like Quartzmon, I can talk about them in a second because I want to explain why they're different. The biggest problem with Apoclemon is that it's actually not easy to, it's not hard to get it into rotation. That was one of the issues that I don't think they thought of, was that they thought maybe this would be too slow. They thought maybe by your the players would not be able to gain their pieces quick enough to set up Apoclemon, which is completely the in, you know incorrect way of doing it. So even with the getting rid of, of something like the Gabumons and getting rid of um, the Aizumon Scatter Mode to one, they thought that would be enough because they said, oh, well, if we reduce the consistency, maybe it won't be as you know effective. Maybe people won't be able to filter quick, which was completely incorrect because at the end of the day, the point is as long as you can still get to an Apoclemon and maybe even two in rotation, you were solid because the rest of your cards, you didn't care where they went. You want them to go to the trash because there's nothing like banishing and the only other way to remove would be like cards to the bottom of the deck. There are only a few cards that actually do that and they're not really good counters in every deck. So that really limits their potential to actually stop Apoclemon. So like what I wanted to say with Death Xmon and something like uh, Quartzmon, the reason that they are so good compared to i mean they're so balanced i mean in that aspect so that's why they're good they're really balanced which makes them fair for every player because you don't have to worry about death x one and quartz mod maybe being too toxic a lot there's ways to play out of them they're like quartz mod's problem is it's a floodgate but it's a slow floodgate because yes it does deal with the board but it doesn't make itself the biggest problem you have to deal with i mean you still have to find a way for the quartz mod to like finish your opponent it still has to swing in which is its problem. It still needs to deal with the opponent. Whereas something like Death X Mon does something similar. It's basically a floodgate, but does something on play, really punishing that can like white boards. But as Death X Mon sits on the board, you realize it's not going to do anything else except for like slowly chip away if it can't win. Whereas Apoclemon did something completely absurd, which was it decided to go after your opponent's deck, which by proxy, for those who are wondering, the reason that Apoclemon also is very powerful is that by playing the game, this was one of the few times by it basically punished you for playing, which was kind of, you know, something that maybe Yu-Gi-Oh players understand a bit. It literally was saying, Apocalymon says basically, by your opponent playing the game, I will punish them because they'll have less cards in their deck, so I'll mill them out quicker, which is absolutely insane if you think about it. It's literally like getting decked out in Yu-Gi-Oh, but consistently. So whenever consistent deck outs happen, it's bad. It's, it's usually not a good format because... There's very few decks that have interactions to stop that in Yu-Gi-Oh! And in Digimon, it's even worse because there are not me there's not really trigger effects in the trash. So, yeah, even when cards get milled, the only deck that could benefit from it is like Beelzemon. And even then, they don't want their deck milled that much because they can deck out. So, yeah, that alone explains why Pokemon had to go. It was just really, really painful to watch it. Um... Like, I saw a game when someone played it, and I think even Card Protagonist did one about it. And when I watched it, I was like, yeah, that's uh, pretty bad, because it literally, I think the Apoclemon, one Apoclemon mills like 8 or 12 cards on its own on its first appearance. And if you're playing a purple deck that's not Apoclemon, you're in trouble, because if you can't win right away, you're going to be milled out like crazy, and you might be decked out in like 2 turns to maybe even 3. So yeah, that's not good. Uh, then moving on to like uh, Gabumon X Antibody and Garurumon X, uh, I'll talk about them in different ways because I do think Gabumon X probably could have stuck around at least for another format. I don't understand exactly how maybe people are using it in Japan or the JP format, but I can understand why it needs to go. Uh, obviously, it offers protection in its additional effect. I didn't actually know that. I thought maybe um, its secondary effect was more like akin to something like uh, an Agumon from BT12. I thought maybe it was like an, a DP boost because I heard people said that, that you run this as a four of because it can go on top of your Sunomons and Gabumons. But like what you really wanted was to use it uh, as an additional just rookie. And I didn't know other people would run this in other decks because I had no idea that um, people were doing that, but they were because it was a good rookie to run with like the um, purple Sunomons. So I was like, oh, okay, N nuts, right? 
So pretty much they, they even reference it that people were using any of, were using very little other cards because it was so good. And I understand that. But then like restricting it to one feels kind of difficult because uh, this is just a funny note for you guys who are watching. If you are a Greymon player, you know that your deck is usually composed with lots of support from different branches because Greymon is like the Pikachu Charizard of like Digimon. But at the same time, we haven't had any card except for the BT-11 uh, Greymon X to actually be limited because that card is literally just nuts. F4. Uh, yeah, so this is funny because there's a lot now of Garurumon and Gabumon cards that have joined the ban list. And it's because they're actually extremely powerful. I think that's one of the funny things where I'm like, Gabumon is getting its just desserts in the Digimon card game because a lot of its cards are becoming meta viable and somewhat, you know, unique. It may be annoying for certain people, but hey, it's, it is what it is. They just decided they'll give it the power and the justice it deserves in the card game. So moving into Garurumon X, uh, I read Garurumon X and the first thing I thought was this card's going to become a problem. It reminded me a lot of Geo Greymon from BT12 where people are using it for its abilities to just simply plus. It doesn't even have to be, even if you had to pay the three um, to Digivolve on top of, this card does a lot, letting you draw and trash, but also effectively just giving you an additional body. This thing was pretty good. Like it didn't really need to do much more to be good because it's it deserves its three play costs, but it just, it facilitates so much. And obviously, I think their biggest problem was they probably thought, okay, if people had to run this over scatter mode, it would be weaker. And the problem was it didn't. It just all works out, you know. So one of those things that were really confusing because it shows that something like the Eismon going to one didn't make a difference because there was still an alternative. So obviously, I get why Garurumon X went to one. It's just funny because I'm like, well... They're balancing and they're also power creeping certain cards, but trying to like balance it out. And they're like, well, we got to put it to one because it's too good. So yeah, Garurumon decks are going to have really funky looking um, ratios, but hey, it's, it's okay. Now moving into Anubismon, and I think that's going to be, yeah, it's actually the last one of the list. So Anubismon, I have only done a little bit of research on Anubismon because I actually like the original Anubismon all the way from BT4. That one actually had a really interesting um, list where you would like basically just spawn stuff back from the trash. They get rush and they'd swing. The reason I liked um, Anubismon a lot then was that I remember seeing this deck list. I don't know who the the DigiTuber is who had it, but the deck list for like Zombie Commandramon, which I thought that was so nuts because I was a Commandramon player at the time. And I was like, that's a really neat like way to play it. But I also thought Anubismon was going to be a broken card because of what it did at the time. There wasn't a lot of cards that spawned stuff from the trash to like pump it up. And it was one of those that really did a good job. And the artwork was stellar for this one from uh, Animal Coliseum. So, you know, always cool. And pretty much I started to look into this deck a bit. I didn't do a lot of JP looking at it, but I understood. So the deck had a few different variations that it would go into. But yeah, one of the biggest things it did was it would reduce play costs. And by reducing play costs, that's usually a big problem in the long in the, in the long term scheme of things because by reducing play costs you're going to be making cards a bit stronger than they need to be because usually a high play cost warrants it to be that good because hard playing things for cheap that are good will usually cause problems that's why with ace cards their balance was that you know they give them the minus for the overflows and some cards are just that good that even by reducing their play costs and then there, say it's like a 12 play cost digimon if you can reduce its play cost to like four by four or five i think of something like ex one's uh, machine German, you just warrant it because even with me without memory tamers if you pass over that much memory but get a mega into rotation or level six that can do a lot it's really good and even better this anubis mod played other cards so it basically allowed it to facilitate a wide board but also give it um very powerful focus because retaliation is a good keyword i think it's one of the very few keywords from early on in the game that people knew were, were very good just because it's a simple one for one removal um even mentioned on their ban list they obviously talk about how consistency and speed is a, um, a, a factor for this as well as um not many decks were able to deal with it when it popped off, which is very true. I think about Merva Loop and Minerva Loop. Those cards or those decks never really seen hit because they were somewhat inconsistent. However, whenever they popped off, 
they popped off. That was the key thing is that by thinking about in law and standards, the problem is with something like this to Yu-Gi-Oh! In Yu-Gi-Oh! There's ways to fix your consistency so you can basically get off what you want. In Digimon, the problem is there are ways to fix your consistency, but they're still like harder to use because there's not direct searching. It's always indirect searching where it's like even if it says reveal the top three and you pick one, you can reveal the top three with certain cards and pick none because none of them meet the requirements you need. Something like this is a focus for like these OTK decks in purple, or a lot of times they focus on looking through for whatever they can get and using it. But in this case, they'll flop sometimes where they'll just miss or they, they, they draw cards. They can't trash what they need and they can't pop off. Anubis Mon was one of these cards that basically allows it to take advantage of that situation and really um, profit profitize off of that i don't think profitize is the word but profit you know nonetheless but the point is you get so much more pluses by using cards and they're, they're consistent even better and it just makes it too toxic for people to play against uh at the end of the day for this ban list the only thing i can say is i really like how they went about it for ex5 uh because here we're going to get those formats and it's not going to hit us right away i keep thinking about bt10's format which we were kind of mad about yeah, I would say we as in like a community because I was one of those people who was like, oh, cross heart's going to be a cool budget deck. I was trying to get a lot of people to join in during BT10 because I knew cross heart was going to be a very good like tier one deck that a lot of beginners could learn. And I think it would be great. And then they go ahead and slap us with a ban list and cross four was going to one immediately. It really hurt. And then sunrise busters because it was like I was getting people hyped up and then I was like, well, we're, we're screwed. <laughs> If you bought into the cross heart hype, you're screwed. But, you know, nonetheless, point is cross encounter was that way. And I'm really happy Bandai's kind of going this direction to fix that problem again by saying, oh, well, you guys are going to have some delayed times. So, you know, that's OK, for, in my opinion, because I'd rather have a healthier format than an unhealthy one. The only problem is I'm like, it, it kind of makes opening product a little bit worse because with Animal Coliseum already losing I think what this is three cards in it already being the two Gabu and Gururu and the Anubis Mon and Anubis is a super which kind of does hurt because if you wanted to rip it then you know if you rip one if you want to build the deck it, that's it so that kind of sucks I would have preferred at least maybe this to two at first and then if it was still a problem go to one I don't know. I'm, I'm more of a like I like that from the OCG for Yu-Gi-Oh is that like they have a lot of semi limits for cards and i do like semi limits more because it changes the way the decks are built because three and one is much easier to do than doing two and two and two trust me guys that's something you don't want to you if you want to give it a shot go ahead and try it uh, i'm just personally being honest i tried that and it sucked um because i remember trying to build a certain deck that had a bunch of two ofs um or basically i tried to do two ofs thinking it was better than doing one ofs or three ofs because there were some cards i was like let me change the ratios around it doesn't make it inconsistent it just makes your hands really wacky you'd rather see certain cards a lot than not see them so just putting it out there for you guys that's kind of how that worked and we're actually going to get to the next portion of it uh, a lot of people are probably spitting today and i don't mean spitting in a bad way i mean they're spitting as in like they're probably going after doing this today because a lot of yuki tubers so i'm just going to go over the ban list really quick and kind of give out some ideas i have on it so we're switching over from digimon to Yu-Gi-Oh, right now okay so i have the ban list up where i'm at <clears throat> i'm looking at it um uh, this isn't like a first um reactions or anything i watched the mega capital g video on it um shout outs to him i really like his content um so yeah we're going to into these um obviously seeing agito and kelbeck doesn't shock me i will give an opinion on that in a second the only one that really shocks me for being banned is mathmex circular um yes i was actually a big proponent and i really loved playing uh mathmex because i played it a lot i played it ever since it came out in oh jesus well, i can't remember this set um I'll, I'll remember it in a minute probably and they'll say it but yeah i've played it ever since it came out i played with the equip spells i played with final sigma i played with everything and i was really happy when we got circular it went to one i completely understood it made my deck that was basically at that time like a rogue to like even just a fun deck it took it immediately to like tier 1.5 in power of the element and that was a really crazy format because there was a lot of strong decks but my deck was like completely catapulted up so i understand but I don't understand it being banned. I don't understand. I never, I didn't see any decks playing it. I didn't really see it in any performing decks. So I have no idea why it was banned. 
I mean, if, if there was like more support that was already here, I could understand, but I don't understand that. I just, I just don't, um, I do. I agree with it. No, I'm not playing a lot right now, so I don't care, but now I'm kind of mad that I have to take out all my circulars when I go back to playing like, um, my code talker deck and stuff like that. That's just, that just makes me kind of upset, but yeah. Um, so Guido Kelbeck, uh, that one's pretty easy. I think it just went the way of the OCG and they were pretty toxic i think the problem was now if you sack them and you're playing as tier and they got lucky it made it really problematic to play against them because they could just get so much advantage like before uh, it definitely was a lot better than like when they were at three but yeah going getting them banned is fine some people think the shuffler should be banned i don't think so because tier can still it's still gonna probably play some variant of the deck here i just don't know what they're gonna do but they'll probably find a way um the one that hurts me a lot for ban so far is probably going to be a sold i've been a warrior player for like got like a very long time and believe it or not when a sold came out i did play it in gokis but i was also playing pure gokis a sold was so good for the deck i mean the combos you could get off of it were like really really good and it's sad to see it go but i um with some of the with one of the other cards released from the ban list today I completely understand probably why it sold was banned and I kind of knew it was a, a ticking time. I'm just happy I played for it, played with it as long as I did because it being banned now sucks, but Hey, is what it is. Any card that foolishes summons from the deck lets you search all in one card. It, come on guys. I'm just like, come on. It, it can't last forever. Um, some of the other cards, I mean, I think that's the whole list for the, what was banned because a lot of cards I don't think need to be banned. I think some cards could have come back uh one of the ones i'm still a proponent for to come back that i don't understand why it's not come back is zodiac dryden i think when it got banned it didn't really make sense and i think it would be better at one because at least people would play it but hey um looking at the lots of the cards that are on for something like the spells nothing really there and looking for the traps nothing really there either i just i haven't looked into it too much but yeah uh, moving into limited um seeing harp horror back is cool I think it could have come back a long well not a long time ago but at least a format or two ago because no one's really playing um orcist in that sense but hey um i know if, i think team aps is trell he had a deck with orcist in it and i was like that was really cool because harpoor wasn't back so shout outs to him uh i really uh like his well, i've seen videos focusing on him from them really cool guy i think he has a really good um Yu -Gi -Oh mindset so really cool probably have a chat with him at some point down the line if possible but yeah cool dude um redox going back to one uh we saw this coming i don't think this was anything too crazy uh it coming back is neat i think the only thing that's strange is i don't think we saw title come back and i think title is the one that arguably should have come back first i remember when it came yeah title's not back yet i guess they're waiting redox coming back is interesting because it is arguably i think the best dragon ruler because it has an additional effect to summon but hey we'll see uh airlifter they had to hit rescue ace uh i am seeing people say that this deck is dead now i don't understand why the ocg still played it out with it at one and i think we have a few more cards that can kind of fix that issue so you know i don't understand i think um, rescue ace should be fine it'll just be a lot less consistent and you'll have you probably want to prioritize getting to airlifter but hey you know it is what it is i guess um sharvara being hit to one in unchained <sighs> okay we knew this had to happen i think the problem is i'm like i'm surprised shavara is the one that's getting hit so soon i thought maybe they would go after something else but then again when i think about the deck because i'm not too well versed in the strategy but i see it enough i don't know what they should have hit hit personally i think maybe shavara going is fine i can understand that but that's not too bad i don't think it weakens the deck i don't think they would like limit yama or something because then that would absolutely hurt the deck a lot so shavara going to one okay i, I guess um, the Sun Avalon cards, I'm not in the Sun Valk, uh, Sun Vine Healer. I'm not even going to talk about them. And the only reason why is I have no idea exactly. I played against, um, I don't know if we even talked about it in a video, but I played against a Sun Avalon player once. Uh, I never, I didn't just, I don't dislike that dude. He went to my old locals I used to go to. My only problem is, like I said, I hate when people are being ultra competitive at a locals and then 
you they refuse to listen to you when you make a misplay and then they call for a judge and then the judge comes over and they get mad because it was a simple fix and then you go and have this conversation where it's like yeah i tried to fix it but he wouldn't do it and then the judge just looks really po'd and he leaves so that happened to me that was a separate story i don't necessarily blame the guy because he's ultra competitive the problem was i was like it's a quick fix of the mistake i made because I, that was the first time i had been playing pendulums in like mm, probably a couple years and yeah so yeah just putting it out there to you guys if you read hear that i'm like yeah that's one of the only things i kind of got i got mad about whenever i'd play um you get sometimes you sometimes you get those people that are like so itching to win it doesn't mean that they're bad players but sometimes they don't understand maybe they're like bad sportsmanship in some instances because i'm like it was a locals um we had like really like uh what's the phrase uh like nice judges they weren't really like too bad of people but the dude who was judging that day was like really po'd i don't know why i don't blame him because sometimes maybe some things are just happening in your life and you're just trying to like do what your best and then you hear a stupid judge call because it really was ridiculous um yeah uh but you know i have to get into it quick because if anyone wonders point was i used um the effect of one of my no i used um, i used revolution dragon and I actually grabbed the wrong target because I grabbed a Draco Slayer monster. And I was like, oh, wait, I can't grab this one because I grabbed, I believe, um, my Dinoster. And I was like, oh, no, I have to grab a Dragon Pendulum monster. And I was like, no, no, it's just a guy tried to tell me it was an easy fix. I'm like, I just need to grab the right one because I didn't draw any cards. I, I figured out before, as I added it to my hand, I was like, OK, I need to grab another one. And then the guy just was like, no, 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 no. And he was he was kind of making me mad because he was like, no, you you messed up, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, dude, you read my, he, he would not read my cards, by the way. And they were all in English. So just putting it out there. Cause I didn't understand that. Cause I was like, just read my card, dude. You'll understand. I made it. It's just, I put it back, grab another one and shuffle it and nothing changes. But then the judge came that happened. He read my cards. He was like, well, then why'd you call me over? And I was like, I didn't call you over. And I pointed at him. And then he was like, uh, didn't even apologize for a misunderstanding. But yeah, I don't want to take up the rest of the video. Just wanted to say that as a little nugget because this is an off-the-cuff video. But hey, it happens. I don't blame the guy. It's just um, sometimes you just get too wrapped up in player brain. Um, Ib coming back. The World Chalice Justice Art. Um, I'm happy I kept my copy because I know it, it'll be worth something. Um, it coming back is fine. I think they thought maybe floating is cool. I think that really helps like the... I don't know if it helps Synchrons. Maybe. I, I gotta see. I, don't, I haven't read it in a while. Um, Snatch Steel. Now, Snatch Steel is really cool. I think it coming back was fine. Personally, the thing that makes me laugh about Snatch Steel is that this is probably the reason they banned it sold besides Infernoble. Uh, because you could mill it, in my opinion, and if you could add it back to your hand, that's what makes Snatch Steel, I think, more toxic. Because there's very few cards that can add it except for something like uh, Triple Tactics Thrust. So, you know, there you go. Also, we have uh, goes in match here going to one as well as we have rivalry of the warlords and there can be only one. I don't know if this is like overdue because I feel like this should have happened a long time ago because it would match like the kind of the ideas of what OCG does a bit where we have floodgates kind of go back and forth. Uh, one thing that surprised me is we still don't have eradicator banned. Uh, that's another thing that popped into my head is like I'm surprised eradicator isn't banned because uh, this does in theory it might be at least help um what the heck is it labyrinth a lot i think labyrinth gets a big plus from this ban list because a lot of decks are now going to be hit down a bit so it basically allows them to kind of like smash them with other traps and stuff like that uh moving into the cards that were moved from different positions uh panker tops and speed right terror top going to two perfectly fine they're not doing anything terror top going back to two i think it's fine we don't really have any random one car uh, two card link combos anymore I mean, we may have a few, but it'll take a lot. Um, Purely Sleepy Memory going back to two, I think that, or going to two, I think that's fine. Purely isn't really running around as a menace. It's a good deck, but it's not crazy. And then all the cards that go, went to three. Um, the only one really I think to talk about maybe is Upstart Goblin. Uh, I think, and then maybe Starter, because with Sprite Starter back, Sprites are now like full power. No, no, not full power, but you know, they're still a lot better now with it at three, because now they can grind out a bit better. Upstar Goblin to three, I think it's really interesting because now decks can run it effectively. Um, any other card on the list I think is crazy at three, maybe Unicorn and Desires, but then with Rise Heart gone, Unicorn doesn't matter. And the Desires back at three, cool. But uh, I wonder what's going to happen because I thought we were going to go to a situation like the OCG where pot cards are all at two or something. But hey, maybe they don't want to try that out yet. 
but pretty much it that's it guys for the Yu-Gi-Oh part um that's it really for the ban list look over there's nothing really crazy here um I think because I think the format needed a fresh breath of air and this is the way to go about it um I'm just curious to see what's gonna happen after January 1st because I want to see what people are gonna do we have a lot of new sets technically and new archetypes so we'll see kind of how the decks move forward that were hit and then see how the new cards move forward and as always this is Brad from the Ad Army signing off and for all of you out there to sign on